here in South Dakota, there are about five cows for every person. That's a lot of beef. And cattle ranchers say the problem isn't getting the meat to your plate, it's the fact that the meat packers are taking most of the profits. There's four beef packers that control 85% of all the slaughter in the United States. These four beef packers are recording profits of anywhere from $1,200 to as high as $2,000 a head during the pandemic, where the rancher is at a break even to even a loss. Les Shaw is a fourth generation cattle rancher in White House, South Dakota. We don't do this to get rich. We, we do this because we love it. We're proud of what my great grandfather, my grandfather and my dad handed down to us. And there's nothing that would make me happier to be able to pass this on to my, to my kids, my two girls. Shaw admits though, it's getting much harder to make a living raising beef cattle because of a monopoly created by four major meat packers, two in the US and two in Brazil. The Brazilians have a hold in this market. Our country let foreign investment into this country. The four major meat packers are Tyson Foods, Cargill, and two Brazilian-owned corporations, National Beef Packing and JBS. In 1977, the big four, as they're commonly called, owned just 25% of the market. Today, that's exploded to 85% of all meat packing in America. Cattle ranchers used to receive 62 cents for every consumer dollar spent on beef. Today, that's dropped to less than 37 cents on the dollar, while the big four have tripled profits in the past two years alone. The Ranchers Cattlemen Action Legal Fund is suing the four companies over accusations of manipulating prices. We've alleged that they have conspired to artificially depress prices paid to U.S. cattle producers while simultaneously inflating the price of beef that consumers pay. Bill Bullard, head of the legal fund, says the main problem is that ranchers aren't told what price they'll receive for their cattle until after it's delivered to the packers. This itself is anti-competitive and it has helped to purge competition from throughout the entire supply chain. So the solution has to be to restore competitive forces to the marketplace. And you do that by forcing the packers to begin competing uh, competitively for cattle. During a congressional hearing in April, CEOs of the four packers denied any price fixing and blamed the rising beef prices on simple supply and demand. South Dakota Governor Christy Nome, a rancher herself, isn't buying it. She says food security is national security. The country that feeds itself controls its own future. But if we start importing food from another country, then they control us. And we are getting dangerously close to that. And we're seeing supply chain issues. We're seeing other countries heavily investing in our food processing systems that is dangerous for the people that live in the United States of America. So anytime there's a supply chain disruption, retail prices go up, the packers make record profit, and the producer uh, suffers the consequences. Nome recently appointed Lieutenant Governor Larry Roden, another lifelong rancher, as agriculture ambassador to focus more on helping the smaller meat packers in South Dakota. 99 of our small processing plants receive grant money. Uh, I tour them every, every chance I get. In addition to that, we applied for and became part of the CIS, which is Cooperative Interstate Shipment, which allows our local uh, processors to sell across state lines, just like they were federally, federally inspected. Roden says the government needs to investigate the practices of those four meatpacking operations and break up the monopoly. Because we have a law in the books at the federal level since 1947, uh, dealing, it was called the Packers and Stockyards Act, which has been ignored largely. And we were doing the investigation. That's all been put on hold. Bullard says if competition isn't restored soon, it will have dire consequences for cattle ranchers. It's extremely serious. If we don't take some immediate corrective actions, this industry will no longer look like what it does today. We've already lost 75% of their marketing outlets, which uh, we call feedlots in the industry, the, the entity that feeds the animal for the last two or three months uh, before it's actually harvested. And so cattle producers are, are finding it difficult to market their cattle, even at the time when beef demand and beef exports are extremely high. As ranchers themselves, Governor Nome and Lieutenant Governor Roden say they bring a crucial understanding to this issue. And that's comforting to Shaw and others like him. It's a unique 
point right here that the lieutenant governor, like I told you earlier, I, I grew up with him. He's somewhat of a neighbor. Their door is always open. Despite the challenges, Shaw says he remains optimistic about the future, mainly because of his Christian faith. There, there's, there's good times ahead. This is just a, a cycle and, and it's up to us. I pray for strong men and strong women to step forward and not be silent, take action, uh, do what's right and make changes. So there is a future for this business and our, and our kids and the next generation. So this heritage doesn't disappear. Wendy Griffith, CBN News, White Owl, South Dakota.